In addition to the, the bill that was petitioned out, we have uh, yesterday uh, made major steps forward in terms of uh, bringing uh, this into actual law, and that is uh, uh, the black and Latino um, uh, legislators, as well as all of the co-sponsors, which I believe we had uh, 17 uh, co-sponsors of the bill, were joined by Senator Gaffey and uh, Representative Fleischman, uh, who are the chairs of the Education Committee, and uh, joined to introduce an amendment uh, onto a bill yesterday. So we will have a fiscal note, and we'll be able to work from there in terms of uh, moving this legislation forward. So we're extremely excited and extremely pleased uh, to have the co-chairs of the Education Committee uh, join us in this effort. Um, and so now I'd like to uh, introduce any of the legislators that would like to say a few words, and we'll start with uh, Representative. Good morning. I would like to thank the two young ladies that joined us today and told us your story. It's important as legislators for us to see the story behind our failures. I once heard someone say that how can you expect a child at 16 to make a decision that would affect them the rest of their life? Now studies show that children's minds are still forming at the age of 60, so there's no way that they can make that kind of decision. I teach young people that knowledge is power. I also teach young people that education is the key to success. And that there, we as a society have to empower our children. Because I know I'm not, you know, I know that eventually I'm not going to be here on this earth, and so I want to leave behind me a legacy that can carry on. And the only way that we can do that as a society is to make sure our children are educated. We have to empower them. We are the leaders. We are the adults. We have to make the decision for our children. I want to thank Representative Bartlett for this, for 65-69, because it, I think it does address the uh, achievement gap issue in that when children know that they're going to quit school, then that's all they, they're just waiving their time. You reminded me of a story of a young lady who was very, very bright. She hated school. So she quit when she was 16. Had great jobs, worked for attorneys, corporations, but guess what? When they found out she didn't have a high school diploma, she was out. She is now almost 50 years old and working on her GED. Now tell me. 50 years old and working on her GED, when she could have done it at 16. One I want to close with this remark. My mom once said to me, she says, Pat, you can make mistakes in life. She says, and you can still accomplish the things that you want, but do what you have to do now while you're still young. And that's what I say about education and getting your high school diploma. Do it now before, while you're still young, before you get married have the children, because we know how difficult it is to go back. So again, I ask my colleagues to join me in sponsoring this bill, and even if we could just get the fiscal note to see the cost behind it, but it is a start. Thank you. I would like to have Representative uh, Michelle Cook from Torrington. Good morning. Ladies, I want to explain to you that you have just become wonderful role models for the youth in Connecticut. You're working on something to improve yourself, and that's what we wish all of our youth to do. I come from a town whose demographics have changed over the years, and I'm working with the Torrington Early Childhood Collaborative, and they've been working on a study for the past several months, and they've, dis they've discovered that one in five mothers in my town do not hold a high school diploma. So for me, this is even more passionate. We, we hear the complaints of cost. We hear that we're not doing the job. And as legislators, our job is to represent not just the adults, but each and every resident of, of Connecticut. My job as a legislator is to represent each and every person in the town of Torrington. And if I have the ability to make a difference, to help impact those youth, to give them a reason to stay in school, give them a focus and a drive, and to explain to them that exactly like Representative Miller said at 16, we don't always realize what those decisions are going to do to our future. Try to give them a little extra push. It might not be very simple in the, long, in the, in the beginning, but this is a goal. We, we need to look to our future, and this is a direction, and we're starting that direction. 
and I thank you for that because I think sometimes our focus and our directions get lost and we do things a little backwards. And if we start with the ones that are going to make our future, and that's our youth of today, then that's where we need to start focusing our efforts. And so I'd like to thank you for your time and your concern and your compassion for these issues, as well as the support for us and, and supporting us in making these things work. So thank you very much. Senator Barbara Lambert from Milford. Thank you, Representative Bartlett. Listening to you and feeling that emotion in you, I was raised with a mom who had, a, they were five in her family. And her father was very ill at a very early age, and he died at 46. When my mom was 16, she did the right thing as the oldest person in the family, and she quit school. And though you could get a job and everything else at that age, and it wasn't required, the pain that I felt that you were expressing, I saw that all my life. My mom was 70 years old when she went back and got her GED. And it was There was a shame that she felt. And she, in those days, they would lie and just say they didn't do the checking they did today. But that pain and that shame, she brought with her. And I'd say, Mom, how could you feel shame? You, you did something that was so remarkable. And, and, you know, and I, I envy you the fact that you had the strength. But it always stayed with her. And in Milford, we made some hard decisions because we have an alternate ed program. And as Representative Bartlett said, all children cannot participate in the same structured education that we have. So what did we do? We had a warehouse, and we housed these children in a warehouse. What did that tell these children what we felt about that value? Well, I'm proud to say that we have the uh, Milford Academy. We now have the Milford Academy alternate program. This facility is beautiful. And when I went to the opening, I felt so elated because these children now had ownership of a building that we invested in. And I just want to say, we cannot invest enough and give our youth the pride. And some of you at 16 made those choices, and I would love to see the bill pass because 18 is the least they can make some informed decision. Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Gary Holder Winfield from New Haven. Good morning. Uh, you know, my mother dropped out of high school, and although she got, she went back eventually and got her uh, diploma, uh, life was difficult for her because of the trajectory on which that decision made for her life. And my mother now doesn't work anymore. She worked herself literally nearly to death to make sure that I wouldn't do the same thing. That is all because of the decision she made. And I talked to my mother one day about it, and I asked her, so why did you drop out of high school? And, you know, for some of us, we don't see a future. And that's the reason she dropped out of high school. It wasn't because she was a bad student. She was actually a pretty good student. But for my mother, she thought that even though she was a good student, in the times that she was in school, it didn't mean that much. And so getting a, a high school diploma really wasn't going to take her anywhere. She thought, maybe I should just go do some work. Uh, and, you know, kind of join along with what other people were doing. It was a wrong decision. But had somebody said to her, you cannot drop out of school at this point, she probably wouldn't have dropped out of school. And, if she, and, and being a good student, she probably would have done a lot different in life. And I probably wouldn't have to go visit my mother now, who is in Evelyn, because of the work she had to do. My brother also dropped out of school for similar reasons. You know, as hard as my mother worked, we grew up in a, my brother and sister and I, we grew up in a community where there weren't a lot of choices. Uh, you could choose to struggle, but a lot of people who struggled uh, did not make it. So my brother, similar to my mother, didn't see uh, didn't see getting a high school diploma as uh, a way to make it. So my brother went to work, and he's struggling to this day. And so I, I understand, in, in a very real sense, what the impact of this is on people. And I understand for another reason. I wake up every morning, and one of the first things I do is I check my email. And I get an email from the city of New Haven talking to me about what's happened with the young people in the city because that's what the emails talk about when they talk about police reports. It's always the young people. And uh, invariably, you will see that some young person has been shot. 
And that young person is usually 16 or 17 years old and does not have a high school diploma. The job we're supposed to be doing here, if we're doing our job, is providing security for the people of the state of Connecticut. Education is that security. If we are not doing that, we are not doing our jobs. It is that plain and simple. And so I'm glad to stand here today to support House Bill 6569, because I think it's the right thing to do and because it's our job. Thank you. Well, that concludes the press conference, unless anyone has any questions. Hearing none, we'll be in session. Thank you. <laughs>